Oh dear, oh dear. Welcome along, people. Welcome along. A new phone, by the way. I've had to buy, I bought a Mavic 2 drone. Cheap drone, under 250 grams. So it doesn't, all the rules don't apply. But it, my, the software went on my old phone, so I had to spend 700 pounds on a new phone. <laughs> Something wrong there. Ha <laughs> ha. So welcome guys, welcome back to the garage. Sorry there's been a slight delay in videos while I've been waiting for bits to arrive, things to get moving. We're now ready to steam on ahead with the project. <laughs> it's quite exciting. It's getting more exciting by the day because I was contacted by Tecmo, Dave Cornish from CRT Performance Parts. Is it CRT Performance Parts? I think so. CRT Performance Parts? Mavis, is it CRT Performance Parts? Now, before we go any further, Mavis is not too happy about the uh, the new hairdo. <laughs> Mavis, what's the matter? No, you're not talking to me. Are you going to make me take it off? You are, aren't you? Come on, it's just a bit of fun. So Dave forwarded on some of the video links for the parts. I wanted some other parts from Dave, you know, Tecmo, Carbon, Bits and Bobs. And Tecmo were sort of impressed. I think the word impressed could be applied here. So they wanted to get involved with the project and they said, look, you don't, to get the best gains from our titanium header, you really need the Tecmo back box to go with it. Would I like to try one? Would I? So they very kindly sent through one of their titanium Tecmo back boxes, which is the matching exhaust for their headers. So what I can now do is some performance tests between the Tecmo back box and the Arrow NCAN I've already got fitted on the bike. So when I get it dynoed, we can swap these over, see what, you know, is there any performance benefits with going with the Tecmo back box with that Tecmo header. So um, massive thanks to Tecmo for getting involved with the project and sending me this. So as well as the exhaust and carbon bits and bobs, I've also got some other parts I'm going to be fitting today. I've got the Vanishy Motorsports billet fuel cap. I hate having to get the key out of the ignition to, to the back of the bike to open the fuel cap. So this is a billet keyless fuel cap um, from Vanishy Motorsports. Very nice. As well as all that loveliness, we've also got a shit ton of titanium fasteners from Race Fasteners. So Andrew at Race, Race Fasteners very kindly, well very kindly, I, I bought them, but he sent through his full set. The stock KTM bolts, they're not nice. So we're going TI. I nearly forgot one of the main installations of this episode. We will also be fitting the uh, Super Mofuls rear uh, tail tidy with built-in LED backlight and indicators. So we're going to be ripping off all of the stock back end and fitting this tail tidy basically. With It even comes with factory fit connectors. So also as part of this, we'll weigh all this, compare it to all the stock back end. Mavis, shall we get started? Shove it. Don't be like that, women. You can't live with them. You can't kill them. <laughs> sexy. It is very sexy. <laughs> so today, really, we're going to be spending a lot of time hanging around the arse end of the bike. Nothing new there. <laughs> fitting the tail tidy. Fitting the beautiful Vanishy Motors. So I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Vanishy? Vanishy? Vanashy? Vanashy Motorsports? Apologies for my terrible pronunciation or is it pronunciation mavis how do you pronounce vanishy yeah you don't know either vanachi motorsport i've also uncovered the h2 few people asking what is that bike which is underneath the cover well it's a kawasaki h2 and here it is looking beautiful i'm going to be doing a few jobs to this as well um, in the garage i'm going to be doing an oil change on it I've not been happy with the braking, even though this bike is fitted with M50 calipers and braided lines and a Brembo master cylinder, the brakes are not great. They're, they don't provide much instant stopping power. So I'm going to change the pads on this. 
Um, I'm also going to be fitting uh, a, a, ble a blow-off valve. <laughs> that has nothing to do with farts. It goes on the plenum and rather than the air, you know, when you shut the throttle, when it's under boost, because obviously it's supercharged this, when you shut the throttle, then there's a, an escape of gas. Now, I'm not talking about what comes out your ass. When you shut that throttle, it closes the, the, uh, the, uh, what do you call them? The, uh, the plenum, the, no, the, uh, the blades, the throttle blades, and then leaves the pressure in the plenum. And then that pressure gets fed out the standard blower valve back into this tube. It goes back into the air box and it doesn't make any noise. It's all sort of, un it's all enclosed. Well, I'm getting a, a, an atmosphere one, so it will blow off to atmosphere. <laughs> I know, I'm not talking about farts. So it'll go pshhh. So when you shut the throttle, it's going to go pshhh and make more noises. I mean, what is the point of having a boosted bike if it's not going to make some noise? <laughs> so that's enough about the H2. Waste of money. Let's come back to the SMCR. Right, so welcome back to my spreadsheet. So I've added the Tecmo can. I'm not going to weigh that today. That's going to be another episode now. I've got quite a lot to do in this episode. So first of all, I want to weigh stuff which are going to be fitting today. The fuel cap compared to the stock cap. See if there's any weight saving uh, and the bolts and everything like that. The tail tidy to weigh. So let me first of all measure the standard fuel cap. Let's see what it weighs. Now this is my measuring apparatus or as some might call it scales i've also got some uh small lightweight scales no i'm not a drug dealer i know these are very lightweight scales but i'm not i'm not dealing i just happen to have some very small scales so first of all let's weigh this it's only plastic it doesn't feel very heavy 155 grams the billet aluminium one i can tell that's heavy just by picking it up but it's lovely isn't it <laughs> That weighs 340 grams. So we are heavier for the billet item, but it's worth that extra weight. Just look at it. I've just realized I've not done that right because I've not included the base piece of the fuel cap. So let me just whip that off and do it again. Now we weren't measuring this little piece. I don't think it's gonna have a huge impact. Stockaroo with the base plate. 180 grams, no, yes, 180 grams. One thing you can have with the uh, with the fuel cap is a little tie line, a little like, anchor line, so you just keeps that attached. But I think I'm going to have it without the the attachment line, just so I can take it off and rest it on the fuel pump. Mm, I don't know, or shall I not? Let's give it a little wipe before we uh, fit. I'm just going to use a little bit of the red rubber grease in the gasket area. to hold that gasket in look around the gasket itself that will just oh, hold right. it in there I haven't got to worry about it leaping off then bing so it does come with this little tether if you want which you then you know I'll have to take that bow out again and fix it like that um, I don't think I'm going to go with the tether well maybe I should maybe someone will nick it there we go, much nicer than stock. Petrol pump, there we go, stick your fuel in, Gov. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Standard tail and, and indicators and tail light. This is excluding the, the big bit that goes off the back. So this is the, the cut down version already of the standard tail. That weighs 660 grams. 0.660 660 gram god oh, i can barely lift it huge huge nice little dinky super mofo's tail 200 uh, 260 260 grams 260 so under half the weight of the stock item and that's without the rest of the tail which goes on it's probably another 300 grams for the rest of the bit that's already taken off of that standard tail. So, a good bit of weight saving there. Now to figure out how to fit this beauty. I guess it goes like that, sliding over. I won't tighten that down fully until I've got the plastic over it to see exactly where that needs to sit height-wise. 
but let's connect the wiring. All factory set up, so it's just a case of popping it back in again. Rear tail, quick squeeze of the brake. Yeah, brake light works as well. And we've just got to get some indicators now. Right, left, right. Hey, look at that. Just grabbing a bit of plastic trim. Try it on the back, make sure it all fits together. And actually it could be the first piece of trim going back on the bike. There we go, fitted, indicator left. It looks way better, doesn't it? Look at that. Way better than the standard backlight. And then of course, the beautiful Vanashi Vanash. As you saw, I struggled a little bit with the wiring, so I've had to, it's come to a long wire because you have to really feed everything right back to under the seat. So all of my rear tail light connectors are actually right up near the air box. So I'm just going to tidy this up, zip tie these down, secure the, these under the seat and uh, we are done. So that's the tail tidy. Fitted, beautiful, happy with that. Looks great. Back of the bike, lovely. I've just gone and picked up, however, these bad boys. Remember I was getting the footrests Cerakoted, my mate Adam at uh, A1 Powder Coating. He's done them. And as if by magic, we have a side fitted. I'm really liking the colour combination. Cobalt, this is called. Cerakote. It's a Cerakote, so it's not powder coat. Cerakote is much tougher than uh, powder coat. It's still applied in a paint form, but it's much tougher than powder coat because you couldn't really powder coat these because if you look in here, you've got these little springs as part of the foot pegs to give them some resistance, you know, to if they touch the ground or whatever. And when you fit these, you have to push them in, and this would, any, if this was powder coat, it would just scratch this. So this is why they're not painted at the factory, I think. That's why they're left bare aluminium. But Cerakote and some careful installation of the springs. Other what? do you want a tip? I'll show you how I did it. It's time to take Chopsy's tip. Now, I don't often give safety tips, but when fitting these springs, you've got to really compress them under tension and they can fling off at a a huge speed so even I am going to wear safety glasses to do this. Okay so I fitted most of the footrest on this side we just have literally the footrest. It's a very simple design a pin with a split pin on the bottom that slides through goes through the spring obviously which is inside the footrest and then you put a split pin in the bottom. Sounds easy yeah how you meant to fit these is push the pin in and then push these in and they're squeezed but they're just scratch all of my freshly coated Cerakote. So I'm not doing that. I'm gonna do it a slightly different way using a zip tie. Take your spring, take your zip tie, and basically put the zip tie around the spring and start to compress the spring with the zip tie. Now th this is very fiddly, because as you do it, the zip tie wants to come off the side, so you've got to go very gentle and slowly Compress it. Oh, it's starting to come off already, look. Yeah, it's come off this side already. All backs. Need another zip tie. <laughs> okay, this isn't perhaps the most ecologically friendly way <laughs> of putting on your footrest, but do you want to scratch them? No, didn't think you did. After a few attempts, hopefully not too many, you should be able to get the spring compressed with a zip tie, something like that. Give it a clean with a bit of you know, brake cleaner, just to get any greasy, less grease on there, the better. It stops it slipping. They so should be able to get it like that. And then how are we looking? Another beauty to this method is when you do push the spring in, it's got a bit of plastic on the edge, which is touching your fresh bit of paint. So you've also got a little bit of protection built in. I'm gonna go a tiny little bit more nicely compressed now. So let's just, there we go, that is, that's it. A little jiggly pokery, where's the bottom hole? We are in without any damage to your freshly bit of paint. There we go, Chopsy's tip, coming in your face. So there we go, end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed my tip. I know Mavis did. Shove it.
If you're interested in the tail tidy, I've got a discount code in the description which will get you 10 euros off. I think it's 129 euros and I've got a code which will get you 10 euros off. So pretty reasonable price that I think for a tail light with all integrated indicators. Super Mofools, link below. Um, that 10 euros off doesn't get me anything. You know, I'm not getting paid. I don't get any commission on that 10 euros off. It's just a way of me to give something back to the subscribers. So there's no kickbacks for me. Use it or don't use it. <laughs> it's entirely up to you. We didn't get a chance to fit any titanium fasteners in this episode. So as we bolt other stuff on, the titanium bits will go on and off. Next time I've got an Oberon clutch slave cylinder to fit to the bike. One of the weak points of the SMCR is the clutch slave cylinder, so I'm going to replace that as a precautionary measure, even though there's absolutely nothing wrong with my one. So lots of other bits to do. Next time we'll also look at the uh, Tecmo, techno, 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 techno. exhaust and we'll get that fitted. Take off the arrow, I think I'm going to fit the Tecmo as the standard exhaust, if you like the one I'm going to leave on the bike. We'll weigh it, compare the weight to the arrow. Huge thanks to Adam. As I mentioned, day one powder coating. If you want wheels powder coating, any Sarah coating done, I'll put links below. He's sort of trying to launch this now and, and get off the ground more as a bike related business with his powder coating because he's got bikes. He knows how fussy us bikers are that when we have stuff painted, we want it done properly. We know the person who's painting it understands what, what has to be done, you know, what has to be masked, brake mating surface areas and all that sort of stuff so a1 powder coating link below well there we go guys thanks for watching as always really appreciated stay safe remain sane i think i'm struggling on that point and i will see you on the next video take care guys